Hey everybody, Asher here, back with some Sammy Space Program, Solo Space Program. Sammy Kerman is the only one who is left. Everyone else is on assignment. Sure, there's some people we can hire, but screw them. We don't need other astronauts. Everybody is out and about. Sure, we have some people that are sitting on the moon that are just waiting to be picked up, like Kimberta and Samty, but screw them. Sammy can do everything on his own because that is the kind of space program we are running here. And what itinerary do we have right now? We have a few tiny missions. We have to bring a Class A asteroid around Kerbin. We have to bring a Class C asteroid around the moon. We have to explore all this shit. We have to get from Ike to somewhere else. Yeah, there is so much to be done. And maybe, oh yeah, by the way, let's also got to launch an orbital space station around Jewel. Is Sammy going to do that? I don't know, because if Sammy leaves, that means the entire space program, wrong button, the entire space program is being run by tourists. Do we really want the entire space program to be run by tourists? I don't know. So I think Sammy is going to be the one that just, I don't know. What do you do when you have one Kerbal? and 4.5 million Kerbucks just sitting there. I mean, there's the whole R&D team and everything, but eh, what do we do? What do we build? I don't know for sure. So let's just go ahead. We'll take a quick look at what our other missions are doing, and then we'll check and see what Sammy's up to. All right, so we have a few different missions out and about already. Now we have the Equia drone that's just kind of sitting there. We have Skytown Fun Park that has one pilot that's just stuck up there, but of course, why would we send a mission to get that? We also have the uh, Kerbin Probe. It's called the Probe Ferry, but in fact, it's just something that scanned the surface here, but we already have that data. We have the Moon Base. Shouldn't have too much in the way of new science, but it's there. We also have a contract to potentially scan temperatures, but why would we do that? We have the Duna Behemoth, which is just waiting patiently for a, over a year and 155 days, so a year and a half before it can fly back home. Of course, it can always try and fly back home a little sooner, but it doesn't have the most fuel in the world, that's for sure. Then there's the Duna Landing Station, the Ike Landing Station, all lots of fun. And then what else do we have? A few asteroids to look at, think about. We do have a newly discovered Type A, the other asteroids that we had, unfortunately. We missed the boat, and they've just kind of flown off. So we have a Type A asteroid, a Class A asteroid that we'll see in 104 days. So that's going to be pretty close to around the time the uh, Eve Dervish is actually reaching Eve. So that could be an interesting stack of missions. We also have a Class C asteroid that's going to be here. A little bit sooner, that needs to go around the moon. Why not have more orbital bodies for science? Then here's another classy asteroid that doesn't really want to have too much in the way of a periapsis. It has a sun periapsis. It allegedly has an encounter with uh, the moon, or allegedly has an encounter with carbon, but I don't know. So that's what we're flying right now. What is little Sammy doing? Oh boy, what did Sammy do? Sammy has built... I don't even know what this is supposed to be called. Is this some kind of space plane or something? It just looks like a little jet. We're supposed to be having a space program, but no, it's the Sammy One. Only cost 11,000 Kerr bucks, so who knows? Maybe we can just put it in the overhead, underhead, something head, but at least we're not going to have the parachutes running at the same time. Let's see how this flies. Oh, look at that. For all the bright, sparkling uh, space program that we have over here, it is still a dirt runway, and I am rolling backwards right now, so let's go ahead and get this started right here. Are we going to have enough lift? Maybe. Uh-oh. Sammy's space program over. Let's try this again. Maybe not with maximum thrust this time. All right, so we need more lift. There we go. Did Sammy die again this time? That's awesome. Uh, Sammy won the breeze. I guess this Sammy won not quite what we hoped for. 
Will that be enough? I don't know. Sammy 2. What do we got? Worst space program ever. Fly, damn you, fly. We have four wheels. Yeah, we're on a dirt path and everything, but the Wright brothers can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Well, we're in the air. That's an improvement. And, and can we land it? Oh, we have one parachute. And we lost it. <laughs> we landed. <laughs> Sammy's like, this is exactly how I planned. There goes the space center. You can suck it. There we go. Onto the grasses. There is no... You can't stop this thing. I mean, there's brakes, but I'm worried if the what happens when I hit the brakes. Because we're just rolling along. So, Sammy. Sammy, good job. And... Now that we've totally gone off the runway, let's just hit the brakes. So, mate, oh, 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 that was what I was worried about. Don't blow up on me now. Look. Nailed it. Can we even EVA? Yes. Yes, we can. Oh, my gosh. What happened to your face? That was, that was not the flight we expected, was it? Well, we're going we're gonna to keep that one, that's for sure. All right, so Sammy's space program, a possible success. Let me just go ahead and see if I can go back to the uh, space center real quick, just so I can get a better picture of that, because I do want one photo op at least. Oh, look at that. Sammy still doesn't have a face. Why? That is so... That's not, that's not what we want. I was wondering why it looks so weird in the cockpit view. Well, let's go ahead and uh, plant a flag anyway. Take a surface. Wow, we actually get surface science from the runway. EVA from the runway. There we go. Plant a flag. Can we not plant a flag? There we go. Not exactly the direction I wanted it to go, but that's okay. It flew, it really flew. There we go. So maybe space planes, not Sammy's forte, but Sammy's gonna have to work on maybe going to the doctor. Okay, so after going back to the drawing board a little bit, we do have the Sammy 3. I did try and read up a little bit on what's supposed to happen to make things fly. I did put a tail fin in the middle, a sort of tail fin. I did put some different winglets and some things on the end to hopefully make them lift. And the center of mass is in front of the center of thrust. Just for our engineer real quick, the SAMI-3 weighs in at a whopping 12.3 tons, and we are at our part limit. We are at maximum parts. So all we got to do is see, can SAMI fly? Can oh, so that was a weird drop. Well, let's go ahead. We have SAS on. Oops, if we turn on our engines. So the eclipse that was there before seems to be over. Let's see if we can pull up and fly just a little bit. We're not exactly pulling up. We're trying. Oh, we're airborne. And we're hopping back down. Go. Go. There we go. Sammy, believe it or not, you are flying. I don't know if that's going to mean good things or if you're just going to go into the drink now. So we're going to have to keep our engines going we still have uh oh Sammy is this the end of Sammy space program I don't know let's go ahead and turn off the jet engines well the good news is we have a flight barely but we didn't totally disassemble and crash so that's a that's a good start we made it all the way out of the space center if I could just get a little higher into the sky get a little bit more control that's a start but these jet engines they're working, so is this going to disassemble when it hits the water? Maybe? No! Sammy actually has a full landing as the air intake is now the water intake. Let's recover. 
All right, so here's the SAMI 4 trying to make this go a little bit differently so it tilts up before. The one um, landing gear was a little bit facing, oh, it was a little bit forward, so the thing was already pointing down. Maybe it'll go up in the sky a little bit. I've also adjusted the wings just to give that a try, make them in a little bit of an angle because that'll change a few of the properties of how it flies. Thank you, guides, that uh, I got to read just to figure this out. So, Sammy, you didn't die. You haven't died while flying this recording session. Let's see if we can actually get you in the air for more than a few seconds. So this is the Sammy 4. Yes, I'm aware of the Roman numeration. It's a joke. All right, we are still rolling backwards every time. Well, let's go ahead and just fire the engines. So once again, if we look at our fuel here, we still do have... Uh, are we gonna up? Oh. oh, and we're in the air this time. You still have our SAS on. Let's go ahead and turn it off. Okay, now how do we fly this thing without it like flipping over just like that? Okay, pull up, pull up, parachutes. Woo, we're doing a flip. All right, and let's cut the engines. Yeah, one fun thing. Well, we did a barrel roll. That wasn't really a barrel roll. We did a half barrel roll. And we landed in the water again. So, Sammy, congratulations. You did. Uh, you got something to actually make it up into flight. Let's revert and fly that again because I think we can, do, we can do even better. Try the same make and model here. So, let's go ahead and... Let's try it without SAS. I have a feeling that's going to be fairly terrible. Vehicle stability control. What is stability? It doesn't matter because we are in the air. Now how far can this thing go? That's kind of what I want to know. As much as I want to turn around to the Space Center, I think, Sammy, it's appropriate for you to start taking a actual test flight here. So we have two basic jet engines. We have a little bit of electric charge. Right now we are in the lower atmosphere. And good, we're actually flying high in the sky. We'll see if we can actually make it to the other space center. I don't know if we can. That's not what we want. There we go. See, this is my where my lack of flight simulator experience is really coming to a head. Because I don't know how to fly things. And see, I'm not pulling up, I'm not nosing up like I want to here. We're actually going to break the speed of sound. I think we might. Okay, let's dial it down just a little bit so we don't have all of those air resistance forces. We can actually put up the landing gears for now and just fly. And hopefully not fall into the ocean. Ooh. Yeah, let's keep our SAS on now. So Sammy, Sammy's not too sure about this. But yeah, there is a whole other runway over there. And I think we can make it to there. I have not I have never in all of my time in Kerbal Space Program, I have never ever flown a mission or anything to this runway, but right now you can tell that I'm really missing it because our angle of approach should be another direction entirely. So here we go. We're having to dip really hard accelerate into this turn nothing can go wrong we're not gonna barrel roll out of control we're not gonna go into a steep dive into the water right there we go Sammy you can do it Sammy it's like you're a commercial pilot or something and we just want to be on our side apparently all right pull up pull up what's cockpit view oh my gosh she's like oh what am I looking at here here still love the cloud view all right, so we're gonna, I guess we wanna turn this way. We got a few little islands here. There's the runway, there's the other potential space center. Let's get our landing gears out again. Let's please not run into the mountain. That would be a sad end to this episode. Whoop! Parachutes! All right, we're gonna go for that one more time, but at least we know proof of concept. Is there, I don't know if there's really a lot in the way of improvements I need to make for this. Other than maybe dropping a solar panel on there somewhere. But right now the jet engines are doing good. The air intake's doing good. 
I'm not using any oxidizer, so I can get rid of that. I don't need oxidizer because I'm using air right now, and these engines will flame out in the upper atmosphere, so we don't want that. So let's actually redesign this as we have a splashdown, and we're just going to revert the space to the vehicle assembly because that's faster. So Sammy is here now for Sammy's space program, and Sammy has one mission in mind. After being caught in orbit for so long, she never quite got to make it to the moon. So she's going to go now, and it's not just anywhere that she's going on the moon. Today we're going to be landing on the North Pole of the moons. Why? Because Sammy says so. As you can see, the craft that Sammy designed beautifully herself. Don't mind the uh, things being slightly off and everything. They just follow the schematics as best you can, and you know how it is when you handwrite things in. Okay, we definitely do not want this staging to happen like this. This is why we do our flight checks the other way. So let's go ahead and put this engine down with this group. We'll put you up here. There we go. I think we have something that'll fly now. Let's find out, shall we? We we're spacing into space. But we're not just controlling with the space bar. That was a Reddit challenge that I didn't take on really, but right now we have a uh, a small tilt to the left which is a little disappointing but she is a level one pilot who is going ah you should know now she is flying in a tiny lander can because of course she's landing on the moon and already we are going way too fast we're getting a lot of air resistance so that's not great Sammy you are a pilot so I'm glad you can prove yourself as a pilot now we just got to see if we can make the burn we need to make. It's going to need to be more than a 17 second burn because we have all these engines. Probably start about now. There we go. Feel the fire. Okay, there's one down. All those engines can go. They will sink back to Kerbin pretty well. And let's see what we've left ourselves with on the burn here. Uh-oh. This has happened a few times recently, especially when using this launch system, where I just lose the ability to do maneuver nodes. It's like the game bugs out just a little bit. But we'll be okay. We've made to orbit plenty of times before. And we have more than enough fuel to do what we need to do. We didn't need to have this extra fuel tank for the launch system and everything. Of course, that's what we have, but we are in a quick orbit. So I'm gonna have to back out of the game entirely just to get my maneuver nodes fixed, which is a little irritating, but then we'll be flying to the pole of the moon because for those of you who have not seen, the moon's poles are weird and different, and I've actually never been there myself in game. So let's change that because after all, everybody else is where? Far, far away. There's the Eve Dervish on its path. There's the Duna everything, LOL, you're stuck. Sammy, it's all you. So, here's Sammy, there's the moon, and burn. I don't even think Sammy has a, a history of orbiting the moon, so that's a positive. Now here's the next thing, and it's a little bit trickier here. We're gonna make a, uh, we're not gonna be crashing into the Equia drone that's here. We already have something that's going over the pole of the moon. Our goal is to get up here. Notice how different the terrain is. Like Minmus, it was still rolling hills and everything, and down here we have craters. And down on the South Pole here, which I never really hear too many people talk about, there's all kinds of just everything's mashed up a little bit. But the North Pole is what I'm interested in, because the North Pole, from what I've heard, looks like a, almost looks like a different game, to be honest here. So to get into our polar orbit, we're going to burn from the Apoapsis. I don't know if I've done a polar orbit on camera. I think I tried to once with Minmus and it just didn't work out. So we're just going to try and get 90 degree inclination. I don't know if that's going to be super close, but we'll, we'll make it happen. So turn it down because we want our periapsis to still be relatively low. So you're going to see me play with the new maneuver nodes just a little bit. That's not what we want. Okay, so we're going to have to accelerate some. All right. Okay, this isn't quite there. 
All right, I don't know if this is exactly 90 degrees, but it's passing the eyeball test for me. I really don't, I really don't know. And unfortunately, because I don't have any like flight computers or anything, I don't quite have a stat tracker to say, okay, is that 90 degrees? Is that what our maneuver node's doing? But we'll make it. So another three second burn, 110 delta V. Pretty simple. But yeah, there's the moon. There's the cratered face that we know. Although, okay, so this is part of the side that does face Kerbin. Because remember, there's this whole side over here that nobody had ever seen before until people launched stuff past the moon. It's kind of like our real life moon where because it's rotating at the same speed as the Earth is rotating, the same side is always facing it, which I've always found fascinating. And for a while, that would make my brain just explode just a little bit. We're going to try and do the burn really hard on the node here just to make sure it works. So we got three hours to kill. Note that we're going to be in space for a few days, but that's okay. We got all the time in the world, maybe. So there's Kerbin floating beautifully in the distance with all the clouds, the city clouds and lights mod. Uh, a few other graphical mods and everything there. Still pretty nice to see. Just enjoy the view, Sammy. Still three hours to go because we are far, far away. Just there's the whole universe, yours for the taking. A lot of times I wonder what how I would feel if I was just floating out in space. I mean, I probably think about uh, one of the shticks that's in uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, where there's a whole torture device in a prison that says, okay, well, how, well it's not really a torture device, it's more of just how do we, how are we going to execute you? We're going to put, hook you up to a machine that lets you know where your place is in the vastness of the universe. Now, granted, there's a plot-related joke in there, but I think the sentiment's interesting enough is that our lives here on that little tiny planet are so important and it's or it feels so important but then we get all the way out here and just everything we've ever known everything we have ever loved wow okay we've switched I think to a suborbital trajectory for a second that's okay everything we've ever known everything we've ever loved is just right there all of written history is just right there Carl Sagan had some good words about it too if you've read anything related to a pale blue dot that's the idea so we're going to get a polar-ish orbit, maybe, maybe, good enough for me. But yeah, Sammy, congratulations, you are now in orbit of the moon with a bunch of fuel remaining. See, here's your craters, here's your sunlight. Sun barely peeking over the edge. There's a lot of wrong places to land. And soon we're going to see Kerbin peeking over too, because that's what happens. So here is our, got to remember I'm in the tiny lander can, so everything's placed just a little bit differently. How close are we to the uh, epic end of our mission? I don't know, because I've lost maneuver nodes again. That's fun. I don't really need them now, it's landing time. But Sammy, Sammy, are you in there? We're at surface speed. You can see the ridges starting to pop up. I don't know if this just looks like one gray YouTube mass. Maybe I could have picked a more exciting place to land. But regardless, it's the moon. It's the top of the moon. How often do you get to go there? Don't say every day, all the time. Now here's the other thing is that we are losing power pretty substantially here. Despite the fact that we do have a solar panel that's getting direct sunlight. So SAS is going to be a liability, especially if we're just using the LV-909s. But here is the top of the moon. It is such a weird environment, at least to me. All right, and it looks like we should probably start thinking about slowing down in a hurry here. All right, I don't know if we're going to have a great place to land, but we might as well kill our velocity on the side. I don't know if we're going to get to the fabled moon pyramid which is really just a feature of the landscape. But we are starting to see some ground scatter. I'll have to check and see how close I am to any kind of moon pyramids. But at least for now, we're gonna be staging pretty soon. 
As long as we can land in the sunlight, we're okay. But it's going to be kind of close. Look at just, there's like a whole ravine system and everything over here too. Cool, just so cool. Let's see, we are almost a thousand meters up from the ground. Note the elevation here says 7,000, but we know better. Okay, so we're, we're falling again. Uh-oh. Control, I need control. Need control. That reaction wheel battery is just falling. We're actually kind of in a free fall right now. That's not good. Okay. Okay. So we missed landing mark one. Yeah, look at the, just the whole, I don't know if it's just the light effects or what from the environment. But this is just so different from what I'm used to seeing in Kerbal Space Program. It's why I'm excited to go to different places on the areas and stuff. And I gotta find my retrograde marker in a hurry. Here we go. Something just exploded. I bet that was a fuel tank. Look, we just added to the lunar environment. Isn't that fun? Okay, now if we land in the shade here, we could be in a little, little bit of trouble. And of course I didn't add any lights to any of this either, so. On the looks of it, we might be okay. We might not be okay at all. There's our debris. There's a pretty significant slope. It's really hard, it's just as hard for me to see as you and, well, we landed. Sammy, did you just crash on top of the moon? Yes, you did. Well, I think we all know what that means right here. So we have two remaining engines, some power and everything. It's, uh, is her exit blocked? No, her exit is not blocked. We can totally, hatch is obstructed, can't exit. Really? That's what we got. Oh no, Sammy, don't don't be stuck there. Come on. Well, I guess if this isn't working anyway, let's go ahead and decouple this. That's not quite what we want. Let's go ahead and uh, decouple this. And let's go ahead and decouple this, and we're gonna roll a little bit. Now, I guess it is possible albeit unlikely, but it is possible for Sammy to make a way out with just the LV-909 and one exposed solar panel. So we are getting direct sunlight. Yay! I don't know how we're getting direct sunlight, but by the power of physics, we're getting direct sunlight. So Sammy can EVA, SAS disengaged. EVA report from just above the moon's poles. We get to keep that data. We get to board. We get to do crew reports. We are just gonna we are not gonna transmit that data because it will kill all of our stuff. So let's see here. Keep this data. Look, she's even doing science. Alright. Well, you know what this means? This means that we are going to go ahead and plant a flag. But I guess Sammy's space program has turned into uh something else. It's too bad I'm not gonna be able to get a great picture of this right away. Let's go ahead and put, let's at least say, if there's some light over here, because of course she's got, a, she flew a rocket herself. We rescued you from a crash and this is what we have going for us. So Sammy Space, just like everybody else, right? So take a surface sample from the poles, EV airport from the poles. The dust is getting everywhere. Let's plant that flag. She's happy about it. All right, moons, poles, Sammy, space program, yay! Exclamation point. 
Definitely photo op time. Because you know, you know how it is. Alright, so this is Asher. Thanks for watching. We'll figure out what we're going to do with Sammy. And someone's got to launch something to Jewel. And somebody has got to... Uh, well, let's see. we got to get a rescue of some kind for Sammy. We've got to launch something to Jewel and everything. But right now, she's going to be cozy here. Who knows? Maybe she can get out on her own. But that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time where we will be flying to Eve and taking care of some other stuff in the in-between. Thank you. See you next time.